Hey church, thanks for logging in tonight. You're on Facebook or YouTube and we're glad that you're here. You know, it's been a great time doing these devotions for the last six months since we've been in this pandemic reality. And we just want you to know that we value you, whether you're watching for the first time or you've been watching from the very beginning. We want you to know that the pastors here at Light and Life, the people loving place, value you and care for you. This devotion time has really been centered around times of teaching and learning and growing in community together. And so tonight, I just want to share a word that I feel like God has put on my heart uh, to share with you. We've got some incredible things coming up at the church. We want to remind you, if you have students, we're doing a backpack drive this Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can come to the church and we're just giving away free backpacks. That's all we're doing. You don't have to donate anything, be a part of it in any way other than just receive. And so if you've got a student um, all the way from uh, kids to youth, we want to bless you um, with the backpack. It's going to have hygiene and school project products in it. And we just want to bless you with that. We also have a baptism service that's going to be coming up. That's going to be the first Sunday night in September out on the schoolyard. We're running these services all the way through August and September as well on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. If you haven't come yet, come join us. It's been about 150 people every Sunday. We've been preaching, teaching, uh, sharing some time of worship together, testimonies, um, and it's been a great time for those that are ready to begin to gather. We're gonna be outside and taking all the safety precautions so that you stay safe in the midst of that. Our young adults are gonna be doing a coffee house time. We're gonna be launching small groups again. There are so many things that you can get connected with here at Light and Life. Awana is going to be restarting. We'd love for you to sign up. If you have little kids, uh, Liz, you can reach out directly to her or the sign up will be on our website, llcf.org. So tonight I just want to share a little word with you that I feel like God has given me. You know, I've been reading again through a couple of books that one of my favorite writers, Henry Nouwen, wrote. And uh, Henry was really focused on interchange, spiritual formation, uh, getting away, refreshing yourself, and staying in it for the long run. And he shares in one of his books this time that he spent with trampeze artists. And it got me thinking about the phrase, let go and let God. Maybe you've heard this before. I actually have friends that have it tattooed on their wrist or on their neck or on their arms or um, other places. And, you know, I hear this phrase a lot in this generation, let go and let God. But what does it really mean to let go and let God? Well, you know, I was thinking of this analogy that Henry uses when he talks about these trampeze artists. You know, in trampeze, there's uh, the flyer and the catcher, the flyer and the catcher. Now, the flyer's job is simply to fly and to go and be in a posture of willingness to be received by the catcher. You know, the flyer can't be the catcher and the flyer needs to let the catcher do the catcher's job. And as I began to think about that, I began to think about God's relationship with us. You know, oftentimes when we say something like let go and let God, really what we mean is like 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxieties or your fears upon God because God cares for you. It's a reminder that instead of hitting your head against the wall, maybe you need to hit your knees in prayer. See, in life, it's uh, all about the desire to control things. We get so caught up in, man, can I control this or can I control that? And when we realize that life seems out of control and we're not in control, often we grab hard for things that God never meant for us to hold on to. Maybe something that you've been holding on to is anger or resentment or fear or anxiety, or you've been holding on to the way that church used to be or the way that it used to look. And you don't want to hear things like a new normal or a new reality or that we can't meet in buildings right now. Can I tell you this, that God is still moving and God wants us to let go and let him take control. You know, I, I remember a time when I was with my son, we were building a sandcastle at the beach and you maybe right now could even uh, physically make a tight fist like this. You know, he was, he was grabbing sand and picking it up and holding it in his hands as tightly as he could. And, and he would drop the sand and drop the sand. And he realized that it would be an insurmountable feat to build a sandcastle that way. When, when I said, instead, just open up your arms, open up your hands, let, let the sand fill up your arms. And he began to fill it up and overflowing, dropped it. And we were able to build this sandcastle so quickly. You know, so many times in our life, we're holding on to something when God is just asking us to simply let go. 
you know, at Light and Life, when we meet together, we often talk about being in a posture of reception. And we'll even ask you, just hold out your hands like this, like you're about to receive something. You know, you can't receive something when you're holding your hands closed. And so for some of us, those things that we hold on to are changed. Some of those things we hold on to might be anger or trying to control situations. And can I tell you this, that God is in control even when things feel out of control. You know, the Bible talks about it over and over and over again about giving your cares over to God, allowing God to work in your life in ways that you can't work in your life. And so there's often times that you just need to surrender and begin to let go and let God. And so that's my encouragement and reminder you tonight is simply don't hold on to things so tightly and try to grasp control that you end up doing things in the name of God that God never intended for you to do. See, for the trampeze artists, it was very, very dangerous for the flyer to try to become the catcher. See, when the flyer would try to catch themselves, they'd often fall and they'd hurt themselves badly or bruise themselves. And so let me ask you this, do you find yourself sometimes falling because you're not positioned open to be caught by the God that holds everything in his hands. The God that knew you before time began. The God that says he has great things planned for your life. That he's knit you and formed you for a great destiny. When you hold on to your ideas, your ways, your thoughts, your frustrations, what you don't want to change, sometimes you get so tight with things that you are not able to hold somebody else's hand or open yourself up to mending and healing and reconciling relationships. Sometimes we get so focused on what we have and so afraid of losing it that we lose following God in the process. And so my encouragement to you is to focus in on God. Now it's important that we get on our knees. I said, don't just hit your head against the wall, hit your knees, but you know, you can pray your mind into thinking you're doing the will of God. Be careful that you let the catcher catch. Be careful that what you do and you say you do in the name of God actually matches up with the character of God. Get into spiritual formation, get into spiritual discipline, read his word, worship, check in to what God is doing, listen to solid teaching, reach out to your pastors, your shepherds, your spiritual leaders and ask them how they can help and support you so that you can posture your hands wide open so that God can catch you when you can't hold yourself up. See, his ways are higher than our ways, his understanding higher than our understanding. And listen, God wants to change some things. God wants to not just change some things, he wants to exchange some things. But when you hold on to frustration or anger or resentment or pain or fear, and you don't let those things go, they begin to define separation from God and from community. Listen. The church is always going to be the church. God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't get so caught up in the past that you can't live in the present and God can't move you into the future. Trust him and know that if you surrender in a posture of reception, that if you surrender, you can soar. That's how you become the flyer and you let God be the catcher that he was always meant to be, that he can position you, shape you, direct you, change you, move you into brand new seasons. And you don't have to hold on to these things, but rather you can let them go and let God bring things like grace and mercy, love and compassion, forgiveness and reconciliation. That's what it means to live in the posture of a flyer, to cast all your fears, all your anxieties, all your cares upon God. Because church, let me tell you this, he cares for you and he wants you to care for others. We love you. We bless you. Let me pray for you for just a moment. Do me a favor right now. Just open up your hands, open up your hands in a posture of reception. 
Think about those things that you need to let go of and say, God, I let them go right now. Maybe you're holding something against a brother or a sister. Maybe you're frustrated with the leadership in your church because they're not doing things the way you want them to do it. Maybe you're frustrated that you can't meet inside and you just said, I'm not even gonna try to go outside. Or, or maybe you won't even go online because you want this worship song or you want that worship leader or you want Larry to preach out of a different book in the Bible. Can I tell you this? Open up your hands and be receptive to what God has given you. Come on, could we let go of the, the resentments, the anxieties, the fears, the anger? Could we hold on to God rather than holding on to these things? Open up your hands in a posture of reception. God, I bless our church, Lord. I bless your believers, Jesus. I bless your sheep. You are the chief shepherd, God. And we wanna be focused on you, Lord, where we've held on to things that have repositioned us away from your ability to catch us and hold us, Lord God, to sustain us and lift us up. God, we let them go and we say, God, we turn to you, Lord. Maybe it's something somebody said or something somebody did or something somebody didn't do or didn't say. God, we, we let it go, Lord, and we ask that you would move afresh. God, move with what we already have in front of us. Let us not crave more when we're not even stewarding what we already have. Open up our hands in a posture of reception. Allow us to steward our gifts well. Allow us to love our neighbors well. Allow us to serve church community well. Allow us to trust others, Lord God, because we trust you. You will catch us, God, and we can soar and surrender. So help us surrender. Help us to practice the gift of spiritual submission, Lord God. Lord, we want to praise you and give you glory and honor. Let's do your name and your name alone. We bless you, Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Amen, church. Thank you for taking some time to just be with us tonight and know that we're reaching through the screen right now with a hug, a hello, a handshake, a high five, all the things that we can't do in public right now. Know that we love you and that our spirit's reaching out to you, that God is with you. He is for you and you can cast these things on him because he will care for you. We love you, light and life, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Have a good night.